Hello friends and welcome to puzzle 9. If you want to read the entire puzzle, just hit pause right now, take a moment and read it. I'm going to explain the algorithm that we're going to use. So the traveling salesperson is a problem in which we have a salesperson that needs to travel between a couple of cities and we need to find the shortest path for this person to travel and visit all the cities there are. And even though this looks like a very simple problem, the key point with this algorithm is that with each city that is added to the graph, the number of possible solutions is n factorial. So if there's five nodes in this uh, example, it will be five factorial. And if we would go all the way up to, let's say 12 cities, that would be 12 factorial. So that would be 479 million ish possible combinations in which we can travel the graph. So you see that this algorithm does not scale very well, but for smaller graphs, it is very possible to just brute force the solution. And that's what we'll do right now. The first thing we'll need is to have an algorithm that will create every possible combination of towns that can be visited. Luckily, we don't need to think of it ourselves. There's actually a really, really good algorithm to create permutations and it's called heaps algorithm. There's a couple of variations. Uh, one is recursive and the other one is uh, iterative. So on Wikipedia, there's this entire set of pseudocode. And the thing that it does, it is really neat. There's a really cool uh, visualization of it. So if we have an array of four elements, A, B, C, D being our towns, the algorithm on every even iteration, it will swap the current position with the element at the first position or index zero. In this uh, visualization, that would be B and A because the first iteration would be an even one. Then the next one, it will swap the next iteration, number three. Uh, in this case, it would be C and B that get swapped. And then uh, let's see, C and A because it's even again and so on and so forth. So the thing for this algorithm, what we need to implement is something called a swap function, which takes two array indexes and swaps them uh, from one index to the other. And then we can implement the entire algorithm. Let's do that. So within swap, we'll take the index A and store it in temporary variable. Then we'll take index A and assign the value of index B to it. And then we'll take index B and store the temp value variable into it. So we'll implement our algorithm. We'll use the pseudocode from the heaps algorithm from Wikipedia and just follow that. So we'll create a list which holds our string array we'll called permutations, create a new int array called indexes and we'll set all the values to zero then we'll just add the current list of elements so the a b c d and the visualization to the permutations array and then we'll start actually creating all our permutations we'll create our while loop and if the index indexes of i is less than i we'll just we'll perform the swap and we'll have a tertiary uh, comparison to see if it's actually the odd or even one remember in the even one we need to swap the first element and else we'll use the element of the index that we're at then we'll add the permutation to the list and continue on our process and with that, we'll have a list of all the permutations of A, B, C, D, or in our case, the towns available. Let's give this a try. So let's create a main function. We'll create a new instantiation of this class so that we can call the function. We'll use A, B, C, D as our example 
just as in the heaps algorithm so you can see the visualization and output next to each other and then we'll just call our function permute iterative uh, use the input dot length and the input as itself from what it returns we'll stream over it and for each one we'll print a line as you see it prints out the array itself which is not entirely what we want so instead of the array output i just grab the output from permutative permute iterative and then looped over the string array and then we can see every combination if we run it now we'll see the same combinations that we saw in the visualization so let's use this and calculate our paths through this graph so the first thing we want to do is we want to process the input that we have from the puzzle, which is a city to a city with a distance. So we loop over the uh, input, we split them up based on spaces, and then we'll have uh, something at index zero, uh, two and four. And so we'll store the cities. Uh, we need to store both cities. So we'll create a function for that. Uh, and then we'll create a connection between those two cities. It goes from zero to two, but also from two to zero, it has to be both ways. Um, we'll use int integer.parseInt to parse number four, so we have the distance as an int. And then when we have everything set up, we have all the cities uh, red, we need to have some form of container that we permute over. We need to have some storage in order to save the paths and the cities. So we'll create a map which holds a city and then a map of all the cities that it is connected to with the distance to that city. It's a little bit cumbersome in Java, but if you know a better solution, hit it in the comments. We'll also create a list of cities that we'll use, which will just be an array list. And this will be the input for our permutation. We'll create a function to store the cities. We have a from and a to. Uh, we'll just take a look in the current cities array. If it is there already, we don't do anything and else we'll just add it. So we look up the path for our current from. If it's not there, we'll use get or default to create an empty map. We'll add to our from connections, the city that we're connected to and the distance. And we do it the same way around, the other way around for the two connections. And we put them back in the paths map. And at this time, we have created our entire graph. We went through all the permutations. We have stored the cities. We have stored the connections. So a thing to remember is that I reuse this day object. So we need to clear the state before we actually start creating our new permutations. We'll create a variable shortest with, and we'll compare new distances found to this shortest value to ensure that we get the shortest path. And then it's a matter of looping over all the permutations. And then we'll loop over the permutation itself. So each city will take the from, which will be the one at the current index, and then we'll take the two, which will be at index plus one. So the, we can only, we should only loop over the permutations length minus one, so we don't overflow. And then we'll take the distance. We'll just call paths get from, and then call the get on two. So we'll be in the second map and we'll get the distance. And we add this distance between the from and the two to the current distance. So we'll get the entire cost of the path. And once we're done, we'll compare that using mat.min to the shortest one and see if our current solution is shorter than the shortest one. Once we're all done, we should have the shortest value and we'll return that as our puzzle result. According to our 
logic the shortest path would be 117 let's see if that's right yes we did it correctly so we take the first part from part one which is the clearing of the state generating of the permutations and setting the shortest path uh, and then we'll create our stream so we'll use permutations.stream and we'll map it to an integer that will be the result of uh, the entire distance of a path this permutation will be passed sp so that would be uh, one row from all the permutations and then we'll create a new stream which will be an in stream which is basically a list of numbers and will range from zero to the length of that permutation that one permutation minus one so we don't overflow we'll map that to an object which basically means that we give it something and a object will be returned so we give it the index which would be the number from the in stream and then we call our paths get first with the city from which is at the index of the array p and then with the city two which would be at the index plus one of the array p which is our current permutation that will return a sum uh, or a distance value that will be mapped to the integer uh, map to int using integer int value because it's an object it needs to be cast and then we'll sum each individual distance integer that we retrieve so we'll get the entire cost of the path for the permutation p that will be returned in the map to int of the entire stream and from that we now need to get the max value and we return that as an integer so we have rewritten the entire stream uh, the entire for loop as a stream i find it a little bit harder to read especially if you're starting out but both ways work so let's see what our answer is so according to our new lambda implementation the max value the, the longest route you can take through all the cities would be 909 let's give that a try yeah that's right so we uh, we solved the problem using two different approaches one traditional loop one uh, stream loop you figure out which one you like best See you in the next puzzle.